Hi, this is Paul Palmer. Today I want to talk about one of the questions I'm often asked. I've been a, Q a QP now, qualified person in the pharmaceutical industry for 16 years. Yeah, 16 years. And um, often I'm asked uh, by people if they should become a QP, what's involved in becoming a QP, uh, and of course how much money I make. Um, but the first thing I say is why, why? Why do you want to be a QP? Because the worst reason to be a Q, be, want to become a QP is just the money. As a QP you've got a lot of responsibility and it's not the easiest job in the world. You have to realize that you're going to have to deal with all the problems. Yeah, you get a lot of training. You have to learn a lot. But it's not just learning it and becoming the QP. You've then got to use it. The information you use, you have to um, interpret issues. You have to guide people what to do next. You have to provide training. You have to audit. You have to do a lot of different things when you're a QP. Bachelor release is just part of the job. So if somebody says they want to be a QP, the first thing I say is, well, have you looked at the uh, application form? Have you looked at the study guide? Have you actually considered what it means to be a QP? And most of the time I find that they say, oh no, I didn't think about that. I just, I just looked at the money, looked at the offers that were being made. I've been asked by an agency if I'm a QP or something like that. But sometimes it's people think, well, it's the top of the range of where I can get to. Well, maybe it is. Maybe from a technical perspective, it is the top, but it's not for everybody. It's not for people who mm, don't want to do the research, don't want to spend the time, don't want to study, don't want to answer the questions at any time of day, don't want to be on call, don't want to work on the same routine day after day, because batch release itself can become routine. There's usually a lot of batches to release with a lot of time pressure because they need it to go out because often there's something that's gone wrong earlier in the process. And then when it gets to you, it's the last minute and it needs to be out and to the customer now. But you, ha you can't um, submit to the pressure. You still have to do the job. You can't rush it through. You still have to review the batch. So, when somebody wants to become a QP, the first thing I do, I get them to fill in the application form. Because the application form tells me whether they've got the gaps that they can fill in or whether the gaps are more than they're willing to do. Because I don't make the decision on my own. I ask them, well, are you happy to do this? Are you happy to do that? You don't have this experience, so you're going to have to go and get it. You haven't got that level of education, so you're going to have to go and get it. Or you have to do that. Is there somebody willing to sponsor you? If there isn't somebody willing to sponsor you, are you willing to pay for it yourself and go forwards like that? So the question, what's it like or how do I become a QP? is not such a simple one. You have to make sure first that the person's actually got the commitment, the interest, the actual learning capability, the knowledge and the willingness to actually do the work to get there. But also once they are a QP, is that really what they want to be? Do they want to take the responsibility? Do they want to put the effort in? Do they want to do the work? Do they want to answer the questions? And once you are a QP, it doesn't end there. You still have to keep yourself up to date. You've still got to study. You've still got to attend the conferences and a whole lot more. So that's it for today. Paul Palmer. Talk to you soon.